Hello and welcome to this Python tutorial. Today I will be showing you how you can get individual cell values from an Excel file and put it into your Python shell environment ready for use on whatever project that you need to get this Excel value for. Okay, I'll show you the Excel files that we're going to be using. I've got two different tables here, one with just column titles and some values below. So we'll be getting individual cell value from any one of these. Not the whole table, the individual one. And then I've got a second table here where we've also, but this time we've got row names as well as column titles. And we've also going to be picking an individual cell value from here. Now I've done a previous tutorial on how to get the whole table put into your Python shell. So I recommend you um, Go and watch that. I'll be putting a link to that uh, on the screen somewhere around about now. And please do watch that if you want to know how to put not just an individual cell value, but the entire table into your Python shell ready for use. I've also got another tutorial on how to clean up data using Python. If say you've got some horrible values here that you want to get rid of like that or you want to change to make them the proper value or substitute for a different value. So I recommend you go and watch that as well. Okay, let's get started. So the first thing you need to do is create your, get your table or save it or find your table depending on what you're doing, whether you're creating a new one or just using an existing one. And once you've saved it, we can go to our Python shell ready to be used. And so the first thing you need to do is import the file. So how you do that is what I've what I've done is I've created the variable Excel underscore file and I'm just going to call the name of the file. In this case, it's random Excel numbers dot XLSX. So the dot XLSX is the, ex the extension of what my file name is called. It's an XLSX file. Now I'm lucky enough because I'm using Visual Studio code and the Excel file I've got is directly in the folder where this Python shell reads from. So all I need to do is call the file name. If your Excel file is not in where the Python shell automatically reads from, you can use the OS module to change the working directory so that your Python shell is reading from where the file is stored and you can also then just call the file name. So after I've created the variable Excel underscore file to equal the name of the file, we need to then put it into our Python shell environment by using the read Excel function in the pandas module. So before I imported the pandas as PD. And so we're just going to call that pandas module PD and then dot read Excel, which is the read Excel function in pandas. Read Excel. And then in the brackets, I'm going to type an Excel file, which is the name of the file. And then sheet underscore name. In this case, it is sheet one, calling the first sheet here. You see in the bottom left, sheet one. And then if I quote that to Excel data, we've now got our Python shell, our, our Excel file put into our Python shell. Just the sheet one though, just the sheet one, just the first table we're using. Just this table here. So that's the whole of the sheet one. In this case, it's just that first table put into our Python shell environment. But now we just want to get the first value. We want to get, well, a, not the first value, a specific value. So how I've done that is I've basically treated this as an array where you have your column and then you have your row. So what I'm going to do is I type in Excel data, calling our Excel data that we've imported. And I'm just going to specify in the first bracket, a uh, column. In this case, I've put cold title two, which is the name of our second column here, just choosing a random column. And then I've also specified a row, but because we haven't got row names here, I'm going to use numbers. So I'm going to use zero. So calling the zeroth row. Remember that when you start a list and stuff in Python, it always starts with zero, one, two, three, four, not one, two, three, four. 
And then I'm also going to, I've equated that, that code here to Excel value one. So Excel value one equals pulling the Excel data using it like in a sort of array, like a 2D array. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to print Excel value one. And so when I print it, we should get the value of a specific, a specific value in coal title two on the zeroth row. So let's do that. Let's run it now. Uh, let's keep going. Cool. And in this case, we get the value 10 in our output on the top right. If I can enlarge it. And we've got 10 in our top right here. So that is the value of coal title two on the first row, the zeroth row. Which is, if we go to our Excel file, it is uh, we've got our column titles here, so they don't count. And these are our values where it starts. And on the zeroth, i.e. the first row, we have value 10. And we can change our column if we want by just changing the name of the column title. Just whatever you've got as your column titles. So that's the first example. That's the first example. And if we go to our second example, here, I'm going to be using the location function, so dot lock. So if we call our Excel data again, when we import it, instead of using just go square brackets, we can type in Excel data dot lock for location. And again, because we haven't got any row names, we're just going to be using numbers again. So in the square brackets of dot lock, I specify the location as zero again, calling the first row, and then cold title two. So we should be getting the same value 10 again. And I've equated that to Excel data underscore mod. So if I print that variable, print that Excel data underscore mod, we should be getting the value 10 again. And then you can see here, we've got the value 10. So it's working pretty well. And see here, Column title two, row zero again is 10. And we can just change here, because I say call title three instead, and we rerun it. The value here is 100. And so if you go to our first row on the third row, on the third column, call title three, we can see the value here is 100. So that's the second example. So if you can roll, scroll back down to the third example, we see here, we've got We've got the location function again we're using, but we've got we've what we've done here is we've called the column before we've used the location function. So if we typed in Excel data and then in square brackets we've called the column and then we've used a dot location to specify the row. So it's a kind of a mixture between the first and the second example. And so and we've equated that to Excel value two. So if we print that and then run it, we get the value 30 because what we've done is we've gone second column, third row, and it's 30. So if we go to our table again, we go along to the second column and then third row of our values, we see that we have got the value 30. So those are three different examples of pulling an individual Excel value where we just have the column title. So next, I'll be showing you how you can pull an Excel value when you have both the column title and the headings and the row names. So here we've got an added complication with the row names as well, or not a complication depending on how you how you view it. It's just a, a bit of a workaround needed. So I'm going to hash out without row names, and what I'm going to do is keep the imported pandas as PD, and if you go to calling our second section when we're calling with row names. So same thing, random Excel, random Excel numbers equated to Excel underscore file two. In this case, PD read Excel, still the same. Excel file, still calling the name of the file. In this case, the sheet name equals sheet two rather than we had sheet one on the top here. And that's how you call different sheets as well. 
And in this case, I've equated that to the variable Excel data two, because it's, in this case, we're calling it sheet two rather than sheet one. That's my logic for calling Excel data two. Okay, and so after we've imported the file again, but this, this time just sheet two, which is this table here, sheet two at the bottom, we can now then go about getting values with rows and columns. And so what we can do is even with row names, we can still call exactly like we did in the first example, we can still call it using like sort of array sort of logic where you can call the column and then the row. So you can still call you know, the column name and a row number. So in this case, we've got column title two and row number zero. And I've got, I equated that to Excel value four. So if I print that Excel value and then run it, we should still get the value 10, exactly like the same as the first example. The first example we had here. But what we can do, and I'm gonna show you with our final example with row names is unlike what we did before, we can actually set an index now where we have our row names. And so what we can do is if we set our index with row names, here row names is the title for all our rows. So that's the one catch as well, because quite often you'll create an Excel table and you won't, you won't give a title for all these row names, but you do need to put something in here. So in this case, I've just called it row names. And then, so you set the index at the column row names, and then if you put comma in place equals true, that will tell your, um, that basically that will import the row names instead of the indexes that we've been using. And then you can start using the row names as sort of the index instead. And then what we can do now is we can type in Excel data two, calling our Excel file where we've now set the index, Excel data two here, our second sheet. And we can now use the array sort of functionality, but instead of having the number we had as the, as the row, we could specify the actual row name as well. So now we have a column title we can specify and a row name we can specify. So if I type in Excel data two, and then in the first square bracket, specify a column, in this case, column title two, and then in the second square bracket, specify a row name, in this case, row name two, and put them both in quotation marks, and then print that value, being Excel value five, and then I can run it, we get the value 20. So now what we've done here is we've specified a column name and a row name, and we get the value 20. So unlike before where we had a column name and then a number in this first sheet example, we now have a column name and a row name we can use to specify individual values. So I hope you've enjoyed that tutorial. That is a really great tutorial for added Excel functionality combined with Python. I hope you've enjoyed it. Please subscribe to my channel if you did, and please do share it to someone who you feel may benefit from this. Thank you very much for watching.